In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the National Shrine of Divine Mercy. April 23rd is the day when we commemorate in the Church martyrdom of St. George and also St. Adalbert. Let us pray to our merciful God through the intercession of these holy martyrs. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who bestowed the crown of martyrdom on the Bishop St. Adalbert, as he burned with zeal for souls, grant, we pray, by his prayers, that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherds, nor the care of the shepherds be ever lacking to the flock. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed round him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless for they heard the voice but could not see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying 
And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him, that he might regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man. What evil this he, whatever, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And there he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is, cho is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. And when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out, Go out to, to all, all the world, world and, and tell, tell the good news. news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and his fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out, Go out, to, out to all, all the world, world and, and tell, tell the good, good news. news. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord the jews quarreled among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat jesus said to them amen amen i say to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. 
These teachings, he said, while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What kind of man Saul was? We heard about him in the Acts of the Apostles. Breathing murderous threats. So Saul was full of, full of hatred. And uh, this hatred stimulated him to bad actions, cruel persecutions. He wanted to hurt and destroy those who believe in Jesus Christ. So St. Paul was a member at that time of false religion because in the name of God, he was persecuting God. And when he was on the way to Damascus, God gave him a sign from heaven, a very strong, bright light. Saul was thrown to the ground. And then he heard the voice of Jesus, Jesus in whom he didn't believe. Those with Saul heard this voice also. God was, God was warning Saul and his companions. So uh, better is to not associate with those who persecute the church, unless they want to convert. Saul was blind. After this sign from heaven, he couldn't see for three days. He was like Jesus for three days in the tomb. No food, no drink. But this blindness, this illness of Saul was leading him to conversion. Sometimes uh, we may ask, why did he get sick? Why did she get sick? What, why did I get sick? In sickness, God is calling everyone to closer relationship with him. Very often, it is a call to conversion. When Saint Adalbert, who was born in Czech, Bohemia, when he was a small child, he was very sick. And his parents promised to give him to God if God heals him. So Saint Adalbert recovered, and then he became priest and bishop in Prague, and then great missionary in Hungary, Poland, and Prussia. Saul, being blind, was waiting for the help of God. And God sent to him Ananias to heal Saul. Also, God is sending to those who are sick 
his priests to bless them, to grant them consolation and very often healings. Sometimes uh, some people are calling uh, us in the National Shrine of Divine Mercy uh, and uh, asking what is the best prayer to pray for those who are sick. So uh, sometimes when I talk to people, I uh, ask them, but has a Catholic priest visited this sick person? So people say, no, not yet, not yet. Oh, so I say, so try to think about this. Uh, this is the most important. If it is possible, it, the best is to talk to a sick person. And uh, we can say gently that, would you like to see a Catholic priest? Because God wants to be close to you. He wants to grant you special grace, especially when I, now you are sick, to heal you. Would you like to have priests coming to you? And so uh, if uh, the sick person uh, wants uh, a priest to visit him, so it's good to arrange this visit. Sometimes it's easy to just to ask nurse or to call the priest and uh, this is the best visit because Jesus will come to the sick person with the priest. And uh, if we cannot uh, talk to a sick person, for example, somebody is uh, already in a very poor condition, is not able to talk, uh, could be in coma, so it's good to talk to the family. And uh, if he or she is a Catholic, the best thing is to ask a Catholic priest to visit him because the priest can give him sacraments. If there is no family, somebody is alone, so maybe you can help and arrange the visit of the priest and uh, you can help your friend who is sick, who has no body from family, that he may also uh, be blessed by God and receive the sacraments. When Ananias uh, came to uh, Saul, he laid his hands on him and Saul regained his sight. So he was fine. God blessed him through Ananias. God healed him. He could see and he was baptized. So he received the first sacrament of baptism. It was a day of great blessing for Saul. His sins were forgiven and he was the member of the church and the Holy Spirit filled him and Saul recovered his strength. Saul is now well known as Saint Paul a great apostle of the nations. St. Paul experienced spiritual and physical healing. So all the sick are in need of sa the sacraments. Graces, strength, healings come through the sacraments. Maybe if somebody is not baptized, it's good to evangelize, to speak about Jesus, about the Catholic Church, and uh, to prepare, at least to proclaim the gospel. Because sometimes the sick people, when they are sick, they want to be baptized. So this is important also to introduce them in faith, to say about Jesus, that only in Jesus you can be saved, no other way. And uh, he knows you. He uh, knows what you feel, and he can help you. So uh, it's good to evangelize, because some people are baptized, being baptized in the hospital. For those who are already uh, baptized, 
we can encourage them to go to confession, especially when some sick has not been to confession for a long time. It's good to encourage them, saying that this is the sacrament of mercy. Do not be afraid. God is coming to you to forgive you, to grant you spiritual healing. And then, apart from confession, anointing of the sick is a beautiful sacrament for the sick, a giving strength, consolation. Sometimes people are in despair and uh, they complain. So it's good to receive the sacrament. Anointing of the sick is also the sacrament of healing. And Holy Communion, Jesus is saying to us today, this is the bread of life. How much the sick need Holy Communion? And Holy Communion is giving life. Even if the body is sick or dying, if we receive Holy Communion, we have life in us. We will not die forever because we will die with Jesus, who is alive in us. I remember when I was uh, in the Philippines and uh, I visited uh, a hospital, a um, poor hospital, government hospital with many sick people. And uh, I noticed that uh, uh, at one bed there were many people. So I approached the bed and I asked, is this uh, patient a Catholic? The family said, yes, he's Catholic. So as I asked, uh, because this, the person was very sick, was not able to uh, speak. So I asked the family, would you like me to give him the sacraments? And they said, yes, sure. So I gave absolution to the sick person. I prayed for him. I anointed him with holy oil. And uh, then we pray together, chaplet of divine mercy with the family. And then I went to another uh, patient and another because there was a big room in the hospital with many patients. So when I was still in this room praying for another sick person, this person which I visited, I noticed that he already died. He, oh, just not long ago, I gave him the last sacraments, he died. But you see, uh, it was God sent me to this person because nobody from the family asked for a priest to come to give the sacraments. So I am afraid that many Catholics are so lukewarm and they don't care about the sick who may die and they don't ask, uh, they don't ask a priest to visit and to give the sacraments, even if they are Catholics. So we should really be very sensitive knowing that apart from prayer, the sacraments are the most important. And uh, sometimes even if a person is in coma, on, uh, we cannot talk to him, to her, he can still hear the voice, he can still receive the grace of the sacraments. I remember once I was called to a sick young boy in a very poor condition and uh, in ICU unit uh, with many tubes and uh, life supporting machine around. And uh, when I approach him, I introduce myself that I am a Catholic priest. I will give you the sacraments and uh, so he, he didn't show any sign that he, uh, he, he is hearing me. And uh, he was just on life supporting machines. But when I pray for him, I ask him to be sorry for all, all your sins and I will give you absolution. I will forgive you and I will anoint you with the holy oil. When I said the um, words of absolution, of forgiveness, I noticed that the tears were coming from his eyes. So many tears, he was crying, but from outside, no other sign of communication. But so it means that God touched him. The grace of God was powerful. And so we see how he was in need of 
the sacraments of the grace. And thanks be to God that somebody from the family asked me to, to go and to visit this person. So uh, even if we know that somebody maybe from your family, your friends, living far away in different state or even different country is in the hospital, make sure, call, call him, talk to him and ask, would you like to uh, invite a Catholic priest to visit you? It will be good for you. So, you know, the sick needs uh, encouragement. And then we will pray the chaplet of divine mercy, especially for the dying. We will support the sick praying rosary, litany to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to all the saints, to Saint Joseph. In the presence of the sick, we can also pray the Psalms from the Bible. Psalms are consoling, beautiful. In sickness, people have a great chance to return to God. Do not be afraid to talk to them, to encourage them, to help them even receiving the sacraments before, in, before going to the hospital, before uh, having surgery. Spiritual healing is more important than physical. St. George, St. Adalbert were sharing their faith with others, and because of their testimony, many people came back to God. Many people converted to the Catholic faith. Mary, help of the sick, pray for them. Saint Joseph, patron of the dying, pray for all, all those who are dying. Saint George and Saint Adalbert, and all the saints, pray for all the sick. Amen. Trusting in Jesus, who gives us life through his body and blood, praying through the intercession of St. George and Adalbert, let us offer our prayers to our loving God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the clergy, may the Lord richly bless them in their dedication to the church and to the preaching of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. For government leaders across the world, may God multiply their efforts to end wars and work towards world peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For those living with chronic illness, may the Lord grant them consolation in their suffering and patience, hope for healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our faith community, May the Holy Spirit help us to grow in our affection of God's mercy to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ, nourished by the true bread of life, may they know eternal happiness in the next. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all who call or write to us. May the Lord favorably hear their prayers, strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Eternal Father, in your kindness, please hear and answer our prayers according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the glorious look with such serenity and kindness, we pray, O Lord, upon these present offerings, that they may be filled with the blessing of the Holy Spirit and may stir up in our hearts that powerful love through which the holy martyrs George and Adalbert overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic house sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and enter willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. From the Diary of St. Faustina, number 300. Mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. Oh, how much I am hurt by a soul's distrust. Such a soul profess that I am holy and just, but does not believe that I am mercy and does not trust in my goodness. Even the devils glorify my justice, but do not believe in my goodness. My heart rejoices in this title of mercy.
How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his holy ones. Alleluia. Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at the feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and in his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us take care of all those who are sick, bringing the mercy of God to them. Even sometimes it's difficult in this time of epidemic to get praise. Sometimes praise is not allowed to enter some uh, hospital wards. And, but uh, if we ask, if we look for, God will find a way. Because also many praise visited the sick with coronavirus and other sick. And uh, God wants to give the grace of healing and conversion to all those who are sick. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, Defend, Defend us, us in battle. battle. Be, Be our, our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Prayer during an epidemic. Lord Jesus, hear our pleas, our good shepherd and divine physician. We implore your mercy in the wake of an outbreak of serious illness and disease. Guide our efforts to prevent contagion and make preparations to care for those most vulnerable. Assist all professionals and volunteers who work to er eradicate the epidemic now spreading. May our actions be marked by your steadfast love and selfless service, and never by panic or fear. Bestow your comfort and healing to the sick. Sustain and strengthen them by your grace. May they know your closeness as they carry the cross of illness. And may all you have called from this life come to worship you eternally with all the saints as you grant consolation and peace to their mourners. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, help of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph, hope of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Rocco, protector against epidemics. Pray for us. Saint George. Pray for us. Saint Adalbert. Pray for us. Christ the Lord is risen today. Joy. 
Hi, I'm Father Chris Aylar, and I'm excited to tell you about the completion of my newest project. It's been a long time in the making. It's called Understanding Divine Mercy, my new book from Marian Press that finally in one place, I feel, gives you the, all the answers of everything you need to know about God's divine mercy. In fact, it answers what is divine mercy? Who is St. Faustina? And what message did God give her for the world? How about the Feast of Divine Mercy? And what do you have to do to receive the graces that Jesus promises on this one day of the year? We talk about the meaning of the image and how to pray the novena and how to understand the chaplet and what to do in the hour of mercy and much, much more. Answering questions like, why would a merciful God allow such suffering? So please, we hope that you'll pick up a copy of this book for you and your loved ones. Because if you get the understanding of what God's mercy is, you will understand why Jesus said it's mankind's last hope of salvation. So please visit us at shopmercy.org or give us a call at 800-462-7426. Thank you and may Almighty God bless you. Hi, my name is Brother Ryan. I just made my first vows with the Marian Fathers. We completed our novitiate in Washington, D.C. And next year I'll be heading to the Franciscan University at Steubenville, Ohio to start my philosophical studies. What does it mean for me to be a Marian in today's world? I think, um, to me, it means to be a living witness of God's totally gratuitous mercy. I look to the Immaculate Conception and see that as the biggest example of God's just totally freely given mercy to, to Our Lady. And um, so I strive to also live that totally gratuitous grace in my life. If you would like to support Marian seminarians, priests, and brothers, please visit marian.org slash holypriests or call 1-800-462-7426. Thank you.